the dragon prophecy the fourth adventure to the kingdom of fantasy by geronimo stilton the company of the silver dragons geronimo stilton i am a best selling author and publisher of the rodens gazette the most famous newspaper on mouse island this is my fourth trip to the kingdom of fantasy skibber hopper i'm geronimo's official guide in the kingdom of fantasy i'm not a published author but i'm an amazing poet my poems are the best better than all the rest king thunderhorn i'm the king of the elves i always appear as a white deer my horns and hooves are made of pure gold sterling i am the princess of the silver dragons i'm not afraid to go into a battle and i know all the tricks to tame a dragon sparkle i am a silver dragoness i work for blossom queen of the fairies and love justice and all that is good bitsy ladybug I'm a tiny ladybug and the princess of kingdom of green fields. I'm small but do my best to help those in need. Mixy Wand Troll. I am the cook for the trolls. I may look like a mess, but I am an amazing chef. Not that anyone appreciates me, especially that rotten chef Horrid. Don't embarrass me. It was five o'clock on a Friday evening in autumn, and I couldn't wait to leave the office. I was looking forward to a peaceful weekend at my home, relaxing in front of the fire with a good book. I could just picture myself in my favorite portrait. Oh, excuse me. I haven't introduced myself. My name is Stilton, Geronimo Stilton. I am the publisher of the Rodens Gazette, the most famous newspaper on Mouse Island. Anyway, as I was saying, that evening I was about to turn off my computer and stop working when the phone rang. At that exact instant, my cell phone began playing my latest squeak tone i had 35 text messages in my inbox then the fax machine started spitting out sheets of paper all over the room and the computer began shrieking like my cheese ball the clown alarm clock with the volume set on hysterical beep 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 I glanced at the screen. Holy cheese, I had received 57 new emails. What was going on? I grabbed the phone, hoping to solve the mystery. Rats, it was my grandfather William Shortpaws. 9 times out of 10, grandfather calls only to yell at me. This time he shouted, "Grandson, you better be ready for the grand opening." Don't embarrass me. Grand opening? I had no idea what grandfather was talking about. Then my cell phone rang again. It was my sister Tia. "Hey, Garibaldi, let me know if you need a photographer for the grand opening." She squeaked before she hung up. Grand opening? I had no idea what Tia was talking about. I decided to go through my email. After all, I had 57 messages. The first one was from Trap. From Trap. Subject: Boring wear. Dear Mr. Need something formal to wear to the grand opening. Can you lend me one of your stuffy suits? Trap. I scratched my head. Grand opening. I had no idea what trap was talking about. I started to read my text messages. 
but I couldn't get past the first one. It was from Petunia Pretty Paws. Good luck organizing the grand opening. See you there, it read. I had no idea what Petunia was talking about. But just thinking about her made me smile. She is such a special mouse. She is smart and kind and funny and pretty. And without even realizing it, I started to doodle her name over and over on a piece of paper. I'll do it. Suddenly, Trap burst into my office. Hey, cuz. I'm heading off for a little R and R on Rat Island this week. So I need that suit for the grand opening pronto, he squeaked. That did it. I had to find out what was going on. What grand opening? What are you talking about? I shrieked. Trap looked surprised. For some reason, he wouldn't look me in the eye. Uh, you mean you don't know about the grand opening? He muttered. Then he turned white, then red, then purple. Uh oh, I could tell this wasn't going to be good. Trap turned purple only when he had done something really stupid. Two minutes later, I found out what it was. It was worse than I thought. It seemed a month earlier while I was away on vacation, Trap had thrown a wild party at my house. In the middle of the party, my friend Dr. Karina warned Fosse Snout, the director of the Museum of Natural History, had called my house and spoken with Trap. She had broken her leg on an expedition and wanted to know if I could step in and organize the grand opening of the Dragon Exhibit at the Museum. Of course I told her no problemo. I knew you'd want to help, right dear mister? Trap explained. I was ready to explode. First, why was Trap throwing parties at my house while I was away? And second, though I wanted to help Karina, I didn't know the first thing about dragons. So when is this grand opening taking place? I asked worriedly. Trap clapped me on the back so hard I heard my teeth rattle. Don't worry, Gary baby. You've got a whole week to pull this thing together, he announced. A week? I felt faint. A grand opening at the New Mouse City Museum of Natural History is usually a huge affair. I need to print the flyovers, write the program, organize the dedication ceremony, arrange the buffet tables, organize floral decorations and cheese niblets. I felt sick. There was no way I could manage it all. Just then I noticed the paper I had doodling on. Petunia, I couldn't disappoint her. So I stood on my chair, held my ruler in the air and squeaked. I'll do it. What else could I say? Sob, sob, sob. I decided to take on the dragon project. There was no time to waste. I had so much to do. First, I made a list. Rancid rat hairs. It was a mile long. My head felt like it was about to explode. There was no way I could get all the things done on the list in a week's time. I began to sob uncontrollably. Sob, sob, sob. My secretary, Mausela, stuck her head in the door. Anything wrong, boss? She asked. How embarrassing. After Mausela left, I gave myself a pep talk. Don't be a wimp. You can do it, I told myself. I looked at my list. First, write program. Piece of cake. I loved writing. Too bad I was writing about dragons. I didn't know the first thing about them. I ran to the library to do research. Lots of research. I was there until closing. 
what an exhausting night on saturday i did more research on the internet on sunday i put together my notes for the dedication ceremony on monday i booked the caterers on tuesday i ordered the flowers on wednesday i consulted the mausoleum director on thursday i hired the musicians on friday i delivered the finished program and flyers to the printer finally one night before the big opening everything was finished cheesecake i was so tired my whole body ached even my fur i thanked everyone in the office who had helped me then i dragged myself home but when i climbed into my bed i couldn't fall asleep I kept thinking about the dragon exhibit. Would the flyers look nice? What about the flowers? Would there be enough food at the reception? I just couldn't stop worrying. At last, I drifted off. But then I dreamed I was being chased by dragons. Help! My alarm clock rang the next morning. I had barely slept a wink. Oh, If only I could sleep the whole day long but I had to get to the museum with a groan I dragged myself into the bathroom but to cheese puffs I hardly recognized myself in the mirror I looked like I'd just seen return of the killer cat the most horrifying movie of all time my fur was sticking up all over the place and there was dark circles around my eyes still somehow i managed to shower eat and get dressed in record time who knew why when i arrived at the mausoleum frederick fuzzy paws the mayor of new maus city was waiting for me we shook paws we talked about the weather my books and other things i must admit I was so tired from the lack of sleep my brain felt like mashed potatoes I did notice though that as we were speaking several mice were staring at me strangely who knew why I tried to pretend not to notice but I was starting to feel terribly self-conscious everywhere I looked beady little eyes stared back at me it was driving me crazy just when i thought things couldn't get any worse first i tripped on the carpet and while trying not to fall grabbed on to a plant second which was actually a cactus with razor sharp needles third in pain i reached out to steady myself but accidentally grabbed onto a rodent's pants pulling them down around his ankles how dare you do you know who i am the rodent shrieked at me standing in his underwear i stared down at my paws embarrassed and that was when i noticed something even more humiliating I was still wearing my slippers and instead of my shirt I had my pajama top so that was why everyone was staring at me right then it was time for my speech so I stuck my slippers into my pocket and scampered to the podium to be honest I don't remember much about the rest of the night I was so tired. I do remember that Karina Von Fossesnout thanked me. What a good friend. Sally Ratmausen complimented me on my shirt, my pajama top, and I ate too much at the buffet. Burp. Oh, when would I learn? That evening, I dragged myself home. I was so exhausted that as soon as my head hit the pillow I was out like a light but in the middle of the night 
I woke up tossing and turning. I had a terrible stomach ache. Oh, when would I learn not to stuff myself like Uncle Cheese Belly at the Stilton Family Cheddar Fest? I stumbled out of bed and flung open the window. Maybe a little fresh air would do me some good. Then I made myself a cup of chamomile tea, but spilled some on my paw by accident. Yowch! I squeaked. I had forgotten all about my sore paw. Those cactus needles had done a number on it. Now it was throbbing even more. I tried blowing on it, running it under some cold water and even packing it in ice. Nothing worked. Oh, why couldn't I have just touched some nice soft fern instead of a cactus with bazillion sharp needles? At dawn, I fell asleep. I dreamed I was swimming in the ocean. The sun was warm. Gentle waves soothed my paw. The smell of roses filled the air. Roses? At the beach? I opened my eyes. I saw a long pink tongue licking my paw and two enormous amber colored eyes. It was the dragon of the rainbow and my froggy friend Skibblehopper. They are from the kingdom of fantasy. Why are you here? I asked. The dragon of the rainbow, who had a habit of singing when he speaks, sang out. We have come at Sterling's request. O oh, brave knight, you're the best. You are honest, true and kind, and possess a brilliant mind. Plus, you hold the fire brand, which will help you in our land. Only you can stop the fight and make the land of dragons right. I must admit, I like the bit about my brilliant mind. But the kingdom of fantasy folk always insisted on calling me a knight against my protest. And rest of the song made no sense to me. To the rainbow! What firebrand? I mumbled. Skibblehopper giggled. Oh, sir knight, don't be so modest. The Mark King Firebreath put on your paw on your first trip to the Kingdom of Fantasy, remember? I looked at my paw and saw that my webbed friend was right. I had the firebrand stamped on it. No wonder it burned so much. Firebrand. Firebreath 3, the King of the Dragons of Fire set this mark on Geronimo's paw during his first voyage to the Kingdom of Fantasy. It showed that Geronimo was traveling through the kingdom with the permission of King Firebreath. An ancient prophecy says that one day a knight will save all the dragons and his palm will bear a mark similar to this one, but made of blue light. Suddenly, everything that had happened on his first Kingdom of Fantasy adventure came rushing back. Meeting Cackle, the terrifying queen of the witches, and Blossom, the kind-hearted queen of the fairies. I stared into space, remembering. Skibblehopper cleared his throat loudly. Uh, I hate to cut into your daydream, your nightliness. But we'd better get hopping. Sterling, the princess of the Silver Dragons, has requested your presence at the Great Council of the Twelve Dragons. So loose the PJs and let's hit it. On my last voyage to the Kingdom of Fantasy, Sterling had helped me save Blossom. Now she needed my help. I was dying to catch a few Zs. But what could I do? I had to go. So I put on my armor, mounted the dragon, 
and squeak to the rainbow in the kingdom of the silver dragons me a hero we flew through the sky made golden by the dawn i have to say it really is an amazing sight even for a scared mouse like me did i mention i am afraid of heights if i unclasped my paw from the dragon's back it felt as if i could touch the stars of course i would never do anything crazy like that i thought about sterling are you sure she wants my help i asked kibble hopper the frog croaked of course you got the firebrand you're the hero of the story my whiskers trembled me a hero i started thinking about the scary creatures i might encounter monsters witches ogres by the time we entered the kingdom of fantasy i was a wreck then things got worse down below it was autumn but in the kingdom of fantasy it's supposed to be eternally spring later i spotted an even more terrifying sight a huge fire was about to burn up the talking forest as the dragon of the rainbow whooped down lower i spotted the dark shadows of three dragons fleeing the area could they have started the fire had it been an accident maybe they had been roasting marshmallows and their campfire had gotten out of control that got me thinking about toasted marshmallows mm, delicious i thought just then i heard a desperate cry help fire save us we landed outside the circle of fire the heat and the smoke were unbearable we began to choke and cough i racked my brain trying to think of a way to put out the fire oh where was a good fire extinguisher when you needed one right then i heard a voice hurry night we are the first row of trees if you knock us down the flames won't spread any further i looked around a giant blue tree waved a branch at me over here he shouted i felt terrible how could i destroy a beautiful living tree the tree noticed my hesitation and said don't worry we've been around for hundreds of years and we've dropped tons of seeds there'll be new seedlings sprouted up in no time i felt awful about knocking down the trees but what could i do the flames were spreading faster than a pack of mice at a free cheddar tasting okay i said then i gave the command and the dragon of the rainbow knocked down the trees with his mighty tail womp meanwhile skibble hopper and i tried our best to put out the rest of the burning flames it wasn't easy skibble hopper tried snuffing out the flames with his jacket i on the other paw picked up a few branch of green leafy tree branches smack 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 i pounded the branches on the fire with all my might which unfortunately wasn't much did i happen to mention i'm not the most athletic mouse on the block finally after what felt like a million years we put out the last ember out when we finished my whiskers were singed my fur was roasted and my paws were like two lump of grilled cheese cooked to perfection skibble hopper took one look at me and burst out laughing
Sorry, Knight, you looking a little fried, he confessed. I was about to tell my froggy friend that he didn't look so great himself when a voice interrupted my thoughts. Thanks for saving us. I waved goodbye to the talking trees and we took off to the kingdom of the silver dragons. Twenty minutes later, the dragon shouted, Brace yourselves! We landed in front of a tree with silvery leaves. It was Sterling's palace. In the kingdom of the silver dragons, just then we heard the sound of beating wings. Sparkle, Sterling's dragon, woke down and landed in front of us. Welcome to the kingdom of silver dragons. Sterling, the princess of the silver dragons. In the kingdom of the silver dragons lives the beautiful, proud and courageous Princess Sterling. She is also known as the leader of light, keeper of the secrets of the flame and guardian of the dragon kingdom. She is a wonderful archer and an expert swordswoman. With her arrows and her sword of light, she can transform evil creatures into good ones. Sterling is also a silver dragon tamer. To train them, she uses her silver flute and an ancient book that smells like lavender. It contains all the secrets of her people. Sterling's palace is built in a spectacular tree with shimmering silver leaves. The whole place is lit up by swirls and swirls of twinkling fireflies. Let's let the dragon of the rainbow rest while I take you to see Sterling, she suggested. Beside me, Skibble Hopper began hopping up and down like a crazed fan at Twisted Tail's concert. Can you believe it, Sir Knight? He squeaked. She's taking us inside the palace, where the first outsiders are allowed in. I think I will compose a poem to celebrate the occasion. I gulped. Have you ever read one of Skibblehopper's poems? If you have, you might not remember it. That's because there's a good chance that you fell asleep before you made it through the whole thing. Yep, that frog is one wordy amphibian. Luckily, I convinced him to put his pen down. We shouldn't keep the princess waiting, I insisted. You're right. Sir Geronimo of Stilton, Skibblehopper agreed. I will compose my literary masterpiece later, when I have more time. Then I can make it extra, extra, extra long. I stifled a groan. Soon we were perched on Sparkle's back, headed towards Sterling. Below, I heard Sterling's flute playing a sad tune. How strange! It was not like her to get discouraged easily. A bad feeling came over me. Oh, I wished I were only dreaming. I hate to tell you. Sparkle set us down under a tangle of silver trees. What a sight! The whole place was lit up by blinking fireflies swirling around in tiny circles of twinkling lights. Sterling sat in an enormous silver throne. Her blonde hair seemed to glow along with the fireflies overhead. Slowly, we reached the throne and bowed before the princess. Oh, princess! I speak. I hate to tell you this, but someone tried to burn down the talking forest. And autumn is here. The leaves are dried out. Something terrible is going on. The princess nodded sadly. I was afraid this might happen. I called you because Blossom entrusted me with the last existing dragon egg and it's stolen. But now I see that the situation is even worse than I thought. 
she sighed, then said, But that's enough talking for now, Knight. I am sure you are tired from your long journey. My faithful aides, Ping and Pong, will take care of you. Sterling was right. I was tired, but I was dying to hear more about the missing dragon egg. Still, I didn't want to upset her, so I stayed quiet. Suddenly, Sterling clapped her hands and we heard loud footsteps. Bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. Two dragons entered the room. One was very thin with a neck like a giraffe and a sweet little voice. The other was very fat with a belly like a hot air balloon and a voice so deep it seemed to come out from a cave. They rubbed their paws together and said, Get ready for the one, the only, the famous dragon's welcome. Ping let Skibblehopper climb onto his back. Pong, on the other hand, grabbed me by the tail. I squeaked in terror, but for some reason he pretended not to notice. 